Welcome to the History of Farmingville, brought to you by the Farmingville Historical Society. It may not boast grand mansions nor signers of the Declaration of Independence, but Farmingville has a fascinating history typical of towns in central Suffolk County. Did you know Farmingville is geologically significant? The town contains the last significant tract of open space atop the glacial formation known as the Ronkonkoma Moraine a 105-acre tract abutting under the aegis of Suffolk County Parks. Farmingville has a rich Indian heritage. The Indian Confederation used Farmingville's high ridges to watch for marauding tribes from across Long Island Sound. The name Bald Hills refers to a local Indian's habit of burning off brush on the hills to clear land for growing crops. George Washington had a hankering for Farmingville. We're not sure he slept here, but Washington, an astute lifelong farmer, remarked in his diary on the quality of Farmingville's soil and vegetation. Historians record that Farmingville struck the fancy of our first president. Farmingville was known as South Coram Hills, Hamlet of Bald Hills, Mooney Ponds, and became known as Farmingville around 1900. The area was settled in 1783 by Brewster Terry, Within 10 years, there were five houses in the town of Bald Hills. The earliest homes said to be built between 1790 and 1797 were owned by Daniel Terry, Brewster Terry, David Overton, and the Hammond family. In 1749, Daniel Terry became the first taxpayer in Brookhaven. Here you can see the original deed. Daniel Terry was deeded 1,000 acres for 17 shillings and 10 pence an amount equal to seven or eight days wages for a craftsman in the building trade. Elijah Terry, son of Timothy Brewster Terry and Elizabeth Davis Terry, was born near Coram Village, February 14, 1787, where his parents had a homestead. When Elijah Terry began his teaching career, he was teaching students in his father's house. His first class was made up of seven boys. Elijah married Carolyn Overton Terry and built their 1823 home, known today as the Terry House, on Farm to Market Road. It was about 300 feet to the east of College Road. The two-story house consisted of four rooms with a central three-sided fireplace on the first floor, with two rooms upstairs. Elijah and Carolyn had four children. Elijah Terry was credited with being the first teacher in Bald Hills. Part of his salary was his care and supply of wood to keep the school decently warm. He was a scholarly person and wrote his own books. There is a record of an arithmetic book written by Elijah in the early 1800s. He was also a farmer as teachers received little pay in those days. Elijah Terry died in 1850, the same year the Bald Hill Schoolhouse was opened. The first schoolhouse in Farmingville was built in 1812 due to legislation set forth in Albany that every child must attend school and a school must be built within a four mile radius. The school was sold to James Clark and moved to the point of Horseblock Road and Portion Road. It then became part of the home of the Bates family and Gertrude Clark, the grandmother of Elmer Fogarty. It was moved west of the schoolhouse on the Fogarty property and in later years it burned. Members of the Bates family posed for a photo with one of their prized possessions, a spinning wheel. Farm families made their own clothes. A spinning wheel was used to twist yarn so that it could be made into cloth. A toll road once ran past Bald Hill in Farmingville stretching for 15 miles from Patchogue to Port Jefferson, but it was a toll road used only for bicycles. One of the more challenging sections of the road, as described by bikers, was one that went north past Granny Road. Here it became a wilderness trail passing near Danger Hill, now the site of the Vietnam Memorial. The name Horseblock Road is an old one dating back to the Revolution, when most homesteads along the road had stone or wooden blocks in front of their homes, that were used for mounting or dismounting their horses. On several spots along the road, there were blocks for the convenience of stagecoach passengers. The blocks were commonly used as meeting places. The granny, for whom the granny road was named, was a legendary woman. Her name was Esther Penny. She was very well known as a local doctress. In earlier times, she might have been taken for a witch because she rode a fast horse and always wore a red Camelot wool cape, probably made from the wool of her own sheep. She was a beloved doctress attending to those in need from Coram to Yapank. 
She doctored the sick, drew blood to reduce fevers, brought babies into the world, and mended broken bones. She compounded medicines from the herbs she grew in her own garden. This angel of mercy died in 1837 at the age of 103. The next time you see a street sign saying Granny Road, think about this amazing lady who traveled the same road 200 years ago on her flying steed on a long forgotten errand of mercy. The one room Greek Revival 1850 schoolhouse served the community of Farmingville from 1850 to 1929. The schoolhouse was heated by a pot-bellied stove that was fed with cordwood. Older boys were responsible to feed the stove during the day. Children brought their lunch in either a tin pail or a tin box, a cane basket box, or the lunch was simply wrapped in a cloth. Some students would bring soup for lunch and put it on the stove to keep warm. Baked potatoes were often heated on the stove to serve to warm, cold hands as well as provide hot lunch on a cold day. There were two outhouses behind the schoolhouse, one for boys and one for girls. After the invention of chemical toilets, the outhouses were replaced with a small addition to the rear of the schoolhouse containing the chemical toilets. The schoolhouse was originally furnished with long wooden benches for seating. Students rotated to the front of the class when it was their turn to take lessons. Older pupils sat facing desks attached to the wall. Toward the end of the century, long benches were replaced with double wide wood and metal desks nailed to the floor. A water crock held drinking water for the students who brought their own drinking cups from home. Older boys were responsible to fill the water crock each day. Recollections of former students Elmer Fogarty and George Holmes tell the story of frogs being put into the well to scare the girls. They also tell of the harsh punishments they received by their teacher for their pranks. Education focused on reading, writing, arithmetic, and morals through stories and the Bible. Memorization was important for spelling bees. The rules were to be on time, do your homework, be quiet, do as you were expected to do, not speak unless you were spoken to, and the three most important words were to obey the teacher. Teachers had to be strict to show strength of character or the unruly boys would take advantage. Teachers who do not live locally would room with student homes. Eleven teachers lived in Farmingville throughout the years. In later years, the children pledged the allegiance to the flag and prayed each morning. Bible readings were also held as the Bible was used in many lessons. The students of the one-room schoolhouse were probably better prepared to read the literary works of writers such as Walt Whitman. Operas, hymns, and Greek choruses were a normal part of the general education. Since 1885, Bald Hill students and their families have held an annual picnic on the schoolhouse grounds. At the 1929 annual picnic, friends were saddened by the thought that it might be their last reunion at the old schoolhouse. It was J. Grant Smith who suggested that an association be formed for the purpose of buying the 1850 schoolhouse, which was scheduled to be sold at auction. Mrs. Wendell Still of Selden was empowered to buy the schoolhouse and the two and a quarter acre grounds. Shares were sold to the friends and families of the students who attended the schoolhouse in order to raise enough money to buy the schoolhouse, and in doing so, the Farmingville Reunion Association was created. The Congregational Church of Farmingville was formed in 1858. They used the Bald Hill Schoolhouse for services until 1890, when they built the Congregation Church of Farmingville with funds donated by the Terry family. Scepter Terry, born 1866, the grandson of Elijah Terry, attended the one-room schoolhouse. Scepter Terry had to leave school at 12 years old to help support his brother and three sisters when his father died of influenza in 1879. Scepter was the first person in Farmingville to have electricity in June 1920. He also had the first telephone in Farmingville in October 1919. Scepter was a farmer at heart, but held the office of town assessor, was very successful in real estate, and was a school trustee for 31 years. He was pivotal in the consolidation of the Hotesville and Farmingville school districts and for the erection of the Brick Schoolhouse, known now as Waverly Avenue School. In 1928, the people of District 13 voted to consolidate Farmingville School District with Hotesville School District 35. The following year, 1929, the new Waverly Avenue School was built on Waverly Avenue, 
midway between Farmingville and Hotesville. Students from grades one through eight attended the new four-room school. Farmingville and Hotesville students planning to attend high school still had to travel to Patchogue for classes. With the introduction of school buses in 1929, students were able to travel to school easily. Elmer L. Fogarty, born 1905, became the bus owner-operator in 1936 to 1937 for the Hotesville farmingville School District when he bought the seven-seated passenger car contract from William Wilde. William held the original contract for $3,700 in 1935 to 1936 to take the Hotesville farmingville students to the Patchogue High School. When Patchogue phased out their program of accepting students outside of their district, the Hotesville farmingville students came to Bayport High School. When Sachem High School was built in 1955, the Hotesville farmingville students were given the option to finish out their high school years in Bayport. Elmer Fogarty was one of the first bus owners to hire women. He felt that women were more immune to the noise, safer with the kids, didn't drink, and had more control. Mary Tingen, the first to drive for him, was given no special, special treatment and drove for 14 years. Years ago, Mr. Fogarty had a way of keeping the students well-mannered and orderly by stopping two or three times per week at the Carvel ice cream store. Flying saucers were 10 cents each. One other fun fact. George Fogarty Sr. was a chauffeur to the actress Maud Adams whenever she was staying at her home on Seneca Road in Ronkonkoma. Mrs. Marie Bussing and her horse are photographed at the Bussing Farm, now the site of the Farmingville Hills Park. Mr. George Bussing was a fruit farmer. George and Marie Bussing were married over 50 years. They were originally from Brooklyn, they lived in Farmingville over 41 years. They had three daughters and two sons and 10 grandchildren. When Marie Bussing passed at 86 years old, she had 18 great-grandchildren and two great-great-grandchildren. Land for the Farmingville Hills Park was the first parcel of land in Suffolk County to be purchased under the quarter percent tax, which enabled sensitive land to be purchased and preserved as open space. The 102-acre parcel currently has several marked hiking trails and is actively used by the community. The land for Hanrahan Farmingville Gardens was purchased from Scepter Terry, grandson of Elijah Terry. In 1929, Hanrahan's Nature Gardens was planned on Hanrahan Avenue, Farmingville. The streets were named for the Hanrahan children. In 1932, the Hanrahan Summer House was built on the northwest corner south of Farm to Market Road, or Horseblock Road. The community had a dance pavilion, tennis court, swimming pool, recreation room, water tower or viewing tower, firehouse, and fire truck. The Hanrahan Firehouse still stands on the property across the street from the historic schoolhouse. The Farmingville Historical Society is exploring whether it can be moved to and preserved on the schoolhouse property. Farmingville has four named hills. Danger Hill and Breakneck Hill make up the hills of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Site. Bald Hill is home to the cultural site and Telescope Hill is the former location of the Farmingville Fire Tower that was once used as a fire observation station to detect wildfires in the rural community. Today, it is used as a radio tower site. Bald Hill was the largest ski area to ever operate on Long Island. Operating from 1965 to 1980, this area had Long Island's only overhead cable lift, a T-bar, as well as two rope toes on a vertical drop of 200 feet. The parking lot for the area was on the top, and there was minimal snowmaking. Many Long Islanders learned to ski there. The current amphitheater is located on what was known as the Advanced Ski Slope. The chairlift was on the stage right side of the amphitheater. The ski lodge building remains and has been used as an art gallery. The 100-foot Vietnam Veterans Memorial is a tribute to the men and women who served our country in Vietnam. Although difficult to see the detail, here you can see one of the first maps of the town of Brookhaven made in October-November 1797. In 2004, Brookhaven Town Hall moved from Route 112 in Medford to the Allstate Building on Bicycle Path in Farmingville. In 1980, this is what downtown Farmingville looked like. 
you will notice many boarded up businesses. Here is a similar picture 36 years later. Farmingville has come a long way both economically and socially. Farmingville is a community of highly motivated inspirational change agents. These residents have created an amazing vision for the future of Farmingville.